Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you. Sally, I'm very interested in your product here. Tell me about this. Well, when I had to start using a cane due to my MS getting worse and worse, I had nowhere to put my things. I couldn't do a shoulder bag because of my neck and back. So I found myself with a cane in one hand, a purse in the other. It just wasn't working. And so I decided I'd figure out a way to build up this cane. So building up the cane was the secret. So I have three different styles, three different sizes, and then multiple fabrics, that type of thing. And I see it has flaps. What, what is there room for there? Well, this is so that you can cover your purse. This is my change purse, some medical things here. I have a place for my wallet here. On this side, I have my phone, my pen, you know, just about anything you need for the day. Now, if I'm out hiking or walking, this style still has the three flaps, but now you have a two foot of extra fabric to put more items in. Does the weight of the wallet and the phone uh, make Push it, it down. Uh, more easier or more difficult when no. you're walking? You see, it's, I'm pushing hard. It's going nowhere. So it can nowhere. never fall off or no, it, slide. It is a piece of foam that sucks to the cane. And once you get it up there, it stays. It has to be a real tight fit. And so. what gave you the idea of uh, setting up a company around this and going well, for it? Well, I was in the health field for 20 years as a PTA. And I had yelled at patients for years to get that 20 pound shoulder bag off when they come in complaining of a neck and back pain. Yeah. And then when I had to use one, I just had nowhere to put anything. And so that was how it came about. I needed somewhere to put my things. After being stranded in the bathroom for 20 minutes, oh, waiting yeah. for someone to realize they had my things that I needed. So it just got very easy. And now I'd never look for my purse. I never look for my cane because it's all together. So it just makes life a lot more convenient. And. Um did you, um, would friends take an interest or did you right away decide, I'm gonna see if I could set up a company? And well, I, uh, I've went through a lot of processes okay, and different such people. As? Uh, hiring different people and not, things not working out too well. But uh, So now it's just myself, two of my seamstresses and one computer gal. So it's very small right now. Um, we have just, I have a website now we have just got on Amazon. Uh, but the product right now doesn't go real well on the internet. It's oh, yeah. they like to see it. Yes. I have a lot of people follow me to my car because they see it and want one. And so I'm just really trying to get it out there and trying to find a partner that knows how to do these things because I don't. A marketing person. Yes, yes. Sort of like a hospital gift store. Exactly. <laughs> And um, so that's what I'm hoping to. I've just started uh, getting in with a group of independent living where a lot of them have the cane so I can go there and show the product. Uh, last year and this year I'm doing a couple arts and craft shows, but uh, that gets kind of hard for yeah. me now yeah. with my disability. Too, too broad. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, what am I saying? What am I trying to say? <laughs> I'm trying to get around it. Is what is how much are they, and does it vary by material or? Okay, like that? Uh, if it's just a standard three pocket with your key hook and stuff, it's twenty five dollars. That includes the tax. And then if you go to one with the skirt on it, these run thirty one. So they're very affordable. They are. And really the fabrics. Are. This is the Condura, which is waterproof, so that's a good fabric. My colored fabrics, most of them are out of the uh, sunbre Sunbrella fabric, an indoor-outdoor fabric. So it's yes. easy to clean off. That's a good idea. And uh, 
So that's usually what I use. And how much of your time is devoted to this company, this project? Well, it's been a seven-year project. Seven I started years. in 2006. And uh, it's been a long, long process. It took me a year and a half to figure out how to build up the cane. But my first uh, entry was in 2006, and then I pulled it back about yeah. a year later because I didn't feel that it was quite right yet. And so then I received my patent April of 2011. So it's, I really need a partner to really help yes, me sir. promote it. Unfortunately, my MS sometimes doesn't allow me to do what I should be doing. Yes. Yeah. So if someone wanted to buy it who's watching this program, how, how would they do that? How would they find you? They can get on my website, Designer Cane Bags. I'm also on Amazon. I'm also on Facebook and Pinterest. And there's also a phone number that they can just call me and tell me what they want and I can send it to them. Um, are you getting some help in the marketing area? That's what I'm needing to do is get more help with marketing. Maybe some of the people here. Everyone here has been so, so yeah, wonderful. Might give you a few tips or yeah. an introduction. Or right. So I've been getting out there more because of them. And the boost programs that they do has been helpful also. So anyway, that's the product. Is it a distraction from your condition? I always find when something bothers me, if I do something else, <laughs> it diminishes, you know what I mean? Well, the funny thing is, even from a psychological point of view, this really, not only do you keep your independence, but it turns into a conversation piece. Yes. So now all at once they're not saying, oh, there's a lady with a cane. Now they're saying, hey, what is that? And I have two really young gals using them. They're in their 20s and 30s. And the first thing they said is, this made me feel younger again. They have real bright polka dot ones. And she said, now people aren't seeing my cane so much as a disability, but they're saying, hey, what do you got there? So it, it helps from that point of view, too. I see it as a fashion shoot for, you know. There you go. <laughs> that kind <laughs> yeah. of magazine. Right, right. That's what I need. Well. Um, I, I haven't seen you at this exposition before, but are you getting to others as well? Uh, I'm trying to get out there as much as I can, and um, sometimes that's a little difficult, but yeah, I'm, I'm getting there as much as I can. That's why it's so important for me to find a partner so they can do some of these things for me. Well, yeah. I think that you are doing an amazing uh, contribution to a female or even male. Well, you see, can make this for men too. The men are really catching On it now because they like the black, but also I do a camouflage. Oh my gosh. And so the camouflage on the Just walking what you need stick for hunters. is perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I have the bird watchers with their you know, their compasses and their all their equipment fits in these. So Well I wish you the best of luck. I'm well, sorry I have to you. wrap up right now. <laughs> thank you for being here. Sir. Thank you. Well, I'm eager to hear about your product. It sounds easy and uh, tasty and something even I could do. Yeah, absolutely. So we produce kits that allow you to make a fondant cake at home. They're all designed for beginners, and each kit includes everything you need in one box. So you basically just add the eggs, oil, and water. So each kit includes fondant in the appropriate colors and size, uh, cake mix, icing, uh, a cake tray, baking molds, and illustrated instructions and tips that guide you through the entire process. So includes the, the actual cake that you're going to make? The, uh, yeah, so everything. everything. You, you just have to add basic kitchen ingredients and use basic kitchen tools. Oh my god, amazing. <laughs> and then <clears throat> what kind of variables are in the product? I mean, so color, de yeah. design? So you select your design from our website. Uh, the website is bridesedgewood.com. Yes. And w you, we send you everything you need in that, in that kit for that specific design. So if you wanted to make a cake that looked like a butterfly, we have a, a design for that. And so you have everything you need with the instructions that, that from the minute you open the box, it guides you through the entire process. And it's foolproof. And it's foolproof. It's, it, we, we make sure anyone can, can, uh, can make the product. We actually started this company as Fonda Beginners. We didn't really know what we were doing with Fonda, but we really wanted to do this. So we learned everything from scratch, so we approached this as beginners. So it really helped us kind of put ourselves in your shoes. To do that. Yeah. And how long did it take to develop the product? 
So uh, we initially started this company um, in January of 2011, uh, okay. the, the initial brainstorming and concept development. Um, I was uh, part of an entrepreneurship capstone course at Michigan State University, oh. uh, where I developed it with my professor. And upon graduating, uh, my co-founders Jessica and Andre, uh, my twin brother, we uh, all created this company together. And it took us about um, six months from graduation to actually have a, a, a product that was ready to be shipped out. And we developed the website, and um, we had such a great response from the product. We, we launched on Kickstarter.com, which is a crowdsourcing oh, okay. uh, platform. Yeah. And so we we had an amazing response. Uh, we had a ton of really good publicity. So we really we took a, a good amount of time to really develop the product and build a strong foundation. And we didn't really start marketing again until uh, this past November. And ever since we've been growing, and um, just one thing leads to another. And uh, and Kickstarter is a, <coughs> it's a way to raise money, but often correct. you you sell a record or you sell a, a cake as part of the thing. Is that part of it? Right, yeah. So uh, really, we're, we were just essentially pre-selling our product. Yes. So we offered people different backing levels, anywhere from $5 to $1,000, and you could pledge a certain amount of money. And our goal was to raise $3,400 in 30 days. Um, we actually exceeded that goal by uh, 180%. So we, we reached, uh, we wrote, raised over $9,600. And so uh, most people backed us at like a, either a $40 level or a $120 level, where you either get one K kit or three K kits. Yeah. And uh, we just, from there, there's the word spread, and it really, it really helped us market the product more so than anything else. And who makes it? So anyone. Uh, our no, 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 but I mean, how, who assembles it? Oh, so we actually do it ourselves right now. We, we have manufacturers that produce the fondant for us in the cake mix and icing. And then we assemble the kits depending on the design. We, we create the designs ourselves, uh, and we actually uh, shoot all the designs ourselves. We style them, and we, we do all the photography. And there was one thing we didn't, we didn't know anything about. We knew nothing about photography, but we wanted to make sure that we kept our image and our brand identity. So we taught ourselves photography as we started the business, and that was probably one of the, um, I think, one of the best things we could have done at the beginning, because now we have complete control of it. And it, it kind of sets us apart. It, it helps us, our products stand out. Our, our, our photography is different than any other company, really, especially food companies. So we're re very glad we did it that way. And right now we're doing it all ourselves, but we're actually going to be transitioning to a fulfillment company soon we'll, we'll, where they'll be uh, assembling the kits for us so we can uh, fulfill the demand because the demand has increased way too much for us to actually fulfill ourselves. So how do you, now that you're doing a Kickstarter, how do you amplify sales? So right now, we really have just been spreading by through word of mouth. Uh, we had a lot of search engine um, results that uh, drew people to our site, and a lot of really good PR. So we, we reached out to a lot of big blogs and newsletters, and um, oh. one of the biggest was Tasting Table, where they featured our kit and gave oh. a review. And from that, we just we had s maybe s five or six other publications that reached out to us, big, big publications like Good Housekeeping, and they featured us as well. And um, it, it just really spreads like like virally through through all these um, blogs and even print publications. So from that we we get a lot of sales from each publication and then uh, actually a national retailer discovered us through Tasting Table and we'll be launching uh, soon with them as well nationally. It's thrilling to me to hear how this new technology can allow sales of a product so you don't really have to get in with someone big, you know, you don't yes. you don't have to beat the door so hard. Exactly, you know? exactly. It's, it's There's never been a time like this where somebody can start a business and bootstrap it that much and grow that quickly. Uh, it, it's just all because of technology. Who, who's the techno person in the group? <laughs> <laughs> We're actually, none of us have a technical background, but we've, we've kind of learned what we had to for the business. Uh, we had, we have a developer that works on our site for us. Um, so that that's just way over all of our heads. Um, we uh, we can do the photography and the branding, but the the coding is a little bit too much for us. But an e-commerce platform is is pretty simple to uh, maintain and pretty simple to create. So it's um, for the ma the majority of the work is 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 done by us. So what I learned from you is there's really a market for this <laughs> bonded mm -hmm. cake and decorating. Yes, yes. So um, over the last couple of years, shows like Cake Boss and Ace of Cakes have really just made fondant uh, a phenomenon. Everyone wants it at their party. It's, it's, it's the centerpiece at celebrity parties, at weddings. It's kind of a, really? a great, impressive piece. You can make really cool architectural designs and really impress your guests. Um, so we wanted to make that accessible to anyone because to buy these cakes online or at a bakery, it's, it's expensive. At a bakery, it it's about $80 to $100 for something small and simple. And online, it's actually it's about $150 if you're lucky. 
and it's shipped on dry ice. Yes. Uh, so it, and it has to be shipped overnight to, to yes. remain fresh. So it's really it's a it's a, it's a pricey thing. So we wanted to give people the experience of making it themselves, especially because finding all the ingredients, especially fondant, is really difficult. So you have to run around to make sure yeah. you have the right fondant, the right color. Um, the right pan size and shape. So it, it can become a really complicated and overwhelming thing. So we make it simple for anyone to do at home by themselves. I'm so glad we had a chance to sit down and Me that too. you took really something that you wanted to learn for yourself and made a business out of it. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. And I'm so glad that you're having the success you are. And I'll be eager to see what other designs you come up with. Great. <laughs> Thank you, you so know, much. So. Sue, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're in business. Tell me about the company. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, Mellow & Co. is a Traverse City-based company. Um, I'm kind of the female version of Geppetto. I invent children's toys and bring them to market. Um, and as of right now, I am 100% United States made. And what is it exactly? My first launch is Nogum, which is a baby teether. And I chose to do the food grade silicone. Um, because I really like how it's non-toxic, it's non-porous, uh, it's safe, um, and it's dishwasher, top rack safe, and parents feel safe with the material. And how did you settle on the design? Yeah, it's kind of a unique design, isn't it? Um, well, my, you know, everybody has their own backstory. My backstory happens to be with my daughter, and um, she, just like any other child, was having a horrible time teething. And I was looking everywhere. I, I Googled, I did everything to try to find something to help her. And um, I started asking some of my other mom friends, you know, what do you do if your kid is in this much pain? Oh, I let him chew on a medicine dispenser or a silicone yeah. wine cork. And it, <laughs> it just kind of horrified me um, because of the safety issue there. So I thought, well, you know, I, I can make something or at least try. And so I started out by just using her Play-Doh. And I figured in a euphoric situation, what would be the the best thing that would bring her appeasement and so I that's where all the little tiny attributes and aesthetics of the the design are coming from to help her with every area of the mouth. But how would you determine the length or the width uh, or even the point? Um, is that a guess or did you uh, just say no, that's a really good I have question. observed her and yeah. this is it or <laughs> no. I'm taking a chance right. here. No that's a really good question and um, you know because it would be a product going into a child's mouth. Safety is the first most important factor. Um, and so what I did was I kept, um, I kept diminishing the size of different characteristics of my, my design. And I would take them to different um, dentists and say, tell me about the shape of a child's mouth as they're developing. And they would tell me about it. And then I would um, manipulate the size of any of the, the characters of it and, um, and until I felt that it was safe enough. And then I also worked um, with the CPSC, which is uh, uh, Child so, Product Safety Commission. Yeah. And um, they have a wonderful uh, booklet, ASTM, and you know uh, it gives you all of the testing that you need to put your product through to be compliant with them. And once your product goes through the testing, they give you a lab report and says you're safe and you're good to go, which is wonderful. And so how did you decide on the material and the weight? It's yeah, well, the material, kind of you know, there's um, silicone isn't the cheapest of materials yeah. out there. Um, and so there was definitely some tempting um, in regards to price factor and materials and things. But when it came down to it, I loved the fact that there's no breakdown. There's no oh. pore. Um, it's non-porous. There's no factor of BPA in this, um, yeah. which are all um, things that parents nowadays are, I mean, those are Watch like up, yeah, they're up front and center. And so I wanted to make sure that those fears were immediately diminished. Um, and I liked that because it's seamless, you can take a knife and you can cut it and it won't crumble in your hands. Um, it won't perforate, it just cuts seamlessly. Um, and it also gave us the ability to be top rack dishwasher safe, which any parent, Lovely. yeah, any parent <laughs> knows the easier it is to clean, the better it is, so. How do you get these made? Um, I have a wonderful uh, manufacturer in Portage, Wisconsin that manufactures these and then they ship them to me and I distribute and wholesale and <laughs> I do everything. Now, how do you get it known that this is available to parents? Yeah, you know, again, things are so different even from when, oops, even from when I was growing up. Um, you know, the web has made, made um, 
made marketing so much easier and hands-on for independent companies. And so, you know, I created a Twitter account, a Tumblr account, a Facebook account, you know, a, a website, things like that, just to continue getting followers. And then, of course, the mommy bloggers. There are many, many mo mommy bloggers out there. So you're not putting on a, um, a suit and going to the toy stores or the the dentist's office or the pediatrician's office? Well, a suit, In other words, no. <laughs> no, but um, what I am doing is a lot of cold calling right now because I'm, I'm still a stay-at-home mom and I'm running this national business now. So I'm, my travel is not attainable, but right. cold, you know, don't ever underestimate the power of cold calling. And, you know, you can definitely through, um, through all of the statistics that you take with your field testing, um, things like this where we have wonderful opportunities to, to speak with people publicly about our products, you know, um, making all of this available for a store in New York, you know, that way they can see that we're valid, they can trust what I'm saying and look at the retail sample and know that, okay, I can place an order and know that it's trustworthy. When you decide to call, call, what kind of lists or what kind of groups would you look for? I, right now I'm targeting um, baby boutiques um, and I'm looking for more of the uh, eclectic kind of retro modernistic oh, type of yeah. baby boutiques um, because yeah. of course the style is very unique. Yeah. So um, you know and um, this isn't a teething toy that when the child isn't teething they're gonna crave for but but it is something that in the heat of the moment they're gonna that's all they're gonna want so I'm looking for stores that do well in the teething toy area wow. um, and but also offer unique eclectic things one of the things I like about it is that it has these little prongs yeah. so that eventually that child can figure out where to bite down or push down or yeah, it's really easy for the children to manipulate, which um, I think because the handles go in different directions. Yeah. The handles are actually um, uh, mimicking a finger of, of their parent oh, because children easily, yeah. the first thing they put in their mouth is a finger. Um, you know, but the handles also make it easy for a child that doesn't have um, strong developed hand-eye coordination. They can just you know, they go cross-eyed bringing it to their mouth, but they're, they're able to get it to their mouth. And um, so there's different textures on there and there's different areas that make it easy to reach the front gums or the back molars or the side teeth comfortably. And that's that's what the waves and the bumps are for is oh. to help itch, you know, the gums yeah. when, when the teeth aren't popped out yet but right. are trying to work their way through. Yeah, I remember myself the teeth I thought it was useless. It was plastic yeah. or something. Yeah, or yeah. Even a ch whatever. Well age. they're so hard. Hard. Mm -hmm. Hard. What does it take to start a company? What are the steps? There's a lot. A lot? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're not talking to somebody who thought I would ever be a businesswoman. I was a PE teacher. I stay at home mom. I worked many nonprofits. So, um, you know, there's first and foremost having a good mentor, um, having advisors and counselors that can allow you to be naive in a private setting and give you the right tools to, to then go forward and seek out what you need to find. Um, and so my counselors, my score counselors to the chamber were amazing and they helped me with my business and with all of the legal um, steps that I need to I take. wish I could continue, but oh. I have to say thank you. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> They're after me. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Thank you so much. To contact Junia, send her an email at info at juniadone.com. For more information, program schedules, and news about future guests, go to www.juniadone.com. Thanks for joining us. See you next time for Uncommon Sense with Junia Doan. Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you.